Hello there, my name's Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And in this video I'm going to be making a magazine cover, except it's going to be made entirely as pixel art. One of the reasons I'm doing this is because I really enjoy when there's a graphic type of design element to a project, uh, whether that be arranging a character sheet or doing UI for a game mockup or anything like that. Um, I feel like I was actually just trying to avoid saying graphic design is my passion, but that's basically it. Um, so a magazine design feels like a cool project to intersect with pixel art. The canvas size I'm using for this is 160 by 200 pixels, which is close to being the same aspect ratio as a standard 8.5 by 11 inch page. I'm not dead on to that, but I liked that this number was divisible into an 8 by 8 tile grid. First thing I'm doing here is getting the title and main headline lettering worked out. And this is because I wanted to make sure that this canvas size could actually suit the lettering that's required here. You know, it'd be unfortunate to do the illustration first and be totally happy with that, and then find out that it was kind of size too small and there's not enough resolution and pixel density to fit all the text that you might need. So I figured I'd get those things on the page right from the start, and then sort of use that to guide the sizing of the illustration that goes in there. As you can see, my uh, fake magazine here is called Square, or more accurately, Square Quarterly becomes the final title. And my idea was that it's a magazine for pixel art enthusiasts that covers whatever sorts of topics would be relevant, um, like the season's hottest canvas sizes, color palettes, uh, pixel fashion, I guess, stuff like that, who knows. Uh, I'm gonna go a bit sci-fi with it though, because I did wanna pull in this, this sort of fantasy idea of pixel art tech. And that's what this main article is alluding to here. Now, if it feels like I'm hitting the ground running on a lot of the things being put on the page here, that's because I spent some time before this sketching out a few ideas. So I worked out kind of the basic layout ahead of time, and I came up with this character illustration that's going to be the focal image for the cover. Now that I've got that bit of lettering in place, I've just scaled down the rough sketch and popped it into my document. And you can see that that's just the photo there that I can move into place behind the lettering to find a good position that looks about right. I'm only going to use this rough sketch as kind of a loose guide though. I made it more to explore the character design idea rather than being something that's like a perfect image that I should trace out one for one. So instead what I'm doing is just using a circle shape and some lines to construct the clean line work for the head. And the rough sketch I guess is providing a bit of reference to measure these proportions against. Although you know even the rough sketch obviously is not perfect by any means anyway. And there's different guidelines that you can follow when you're making portraits about where to place the facial features relative to each other, if you want to get super analytical about it. And I do appreciate that kind of thing from time to time. But for this one, I actually just sort of loosened up a little bit because I, I didn't want to really end up with that same textbook looking anime style face that I might default to for this sort of thing. And this is still a small enough space resolution that you can actually just kind of bump the features around a few pixels at a time and sort of feel out what looks right. So I was kind of just going with that this time. One of the stylistic things I was trying to do with this character was bring in kind of a punk rock styling to it. But I also wanted to mix that with some idea of this cover image being like a fashion editorial take on that concept. So for the hair, rather than going with something spot on to that, like a, a mohawk or a spiked up style, I've created these three large knots using circles. And I like how, in a way, it provides something interesting in a similar way to what might be interesting about a mohawk. At least just in this general idea of playing with a kind of an interesting volume and geometry and stuff like that. But I feel like it's a bit more refreshing to work with in this context. And then to make it less soft and a bit more punk or aggressive or whatever, I've, I've gone through and created this uh, spiky texture around each knot. And for now, I've kept this fairly loose and organic just so there's a bit of natural variation between each of them. All right, so when we move to the outfit, again, I've got the rough sketch enabled just because I wanted to take a few cues about the general structure. But in the rough sketch, I didn't even really totally nail the look that I was trying to go for. So it's gonna need quite a bit of reworking anyway. Uh, what I wanted here uh, should actually be something that looks more like a leather jacket uh, with the collar and the lapels and everything but then uh, there's also these giant shoulder pads off to the side. And then my plan was to kind of punk it up with a few pins and detailing around the jacket. The funny thing about this design was like, for some characters, you go in maybe trying to make something that's just cool to you or cool for the sake of it or whatever. 
And some designs, you're thinking more about who is this person in, in this world that they're set and maybe try to shape something appropriately to whatever that narrative is. Uh, for this one, I tried to approach it from this angle of like, okay, what would an avant-garde fashion designer do as their take on punk rock high fashion? And to kind of get in the mind of that designer, even though the phrase punk rock high fashion, to me, should already sound like a paradox by the name alone. And the thing that popped into my head was that this fashion designer would take this idea of the leather jacket and try to blend it with something, you know, artistic and contrasting like uh, Edo period fashion of a samurai or a geisha or something to that effect. So me being the one actually making it, it's this weird headspace where I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds like something they would do in a fashion show. Of course they'd do that. But at the same time, I'm still like, you know what? That actually does sound pretty cool. And I do want to make it and I do want to do a good job also. So that's all to say that I've kind of lost track of whether or not there are, in fact, you know, multiple layers to this thing. Uh, but that's okay, because as I got to the detailing, I was just having fun filling out different decorations for the jacket and piercings and all that kind of stuff. And then bringing this back to the idea for the magazine, the article was going to be about how there's this new piece of tech that allows you to see in pixels, uh, like it filters the whole world into a pixel art style. So for that, I've added this goggle accessory on one eye. Uh, which I thought was neat as being sort of like a monocle that maybe lends a contrasting wealthy look to the whole thing. You know how you always look rich when you have a monocle on? Um, but it's also verging into this cyberpunk territory, so it's kind of a cool balance going on. Now that a good deal of the line work and lettering have been worked out, it's time to start introducing color. And I wanted to mention that I've set my document into the CMYK color mode rather than the default RGB. And the key difference here is that CMYK mode is going to restrict you to only be able to access colors that are within that range of being possible for a color printer. And I decided to work like this because I thought I might want to get this one printed after just because it obviously suits the concept I'm going for here. So I wanted to make sure that I was only using colors that would be compliant for being able to be printed. Uh, as a side note, the CMYK format actually is not the worst way to pick out colors, I find, because each of the CMYK values uh, range from 0 to 100. So you can almost just build up those values to assemble a certain color that you want. So for example, uh, if you start with a pure yellow, you could make it more orange by adding magenta to it, or make it more green by adding cyan. Uh, of course, you can just use the color picker or color wheel instead. And I've also made use of uh, typical features like the uh, hue and saturation adjustment sliders. And those allow you to tweak colors as per usual uh, while still keeping it restricted to within that appropriate CMYK range. With the shading, I've landed on this purpley tone, which I'm using here to create some highlights that bring out uh, that stylized spiky texture to the hair. I'm placing these roughly in triangular patches and because the rest of this is dark, it worked well just to pop out this geometry as like the high points of the texture catching light on one particular face. I also had this strong pink color that was on the pixel device. And I tried using it for a highlight tone on the face and thought it looked cool against the blue. Uh, it's almost like this person is being lit by a UV light and these are bright highlights reacting to that. So it's kind of serving double duty as being a highlight, but also just a fun pop of color for the detailing here and there. I also tried to keep the color count fairly limited here, so a lot of the costuming reuses colors in different ways just to make the most of a low color count. Uh, this is one of those projects where part of the novelty is in the fact that it is pixelated rather than a typical look of photos and other sorts of graphics that we're used to seeing on magazines. So I feel like the less is more approach especially applies here. And you know, hopefully between the somewhat small canvas size and the limited color palette, it is able to read as pixel art even from a distance or from a thumbnail image. Now, that being said, uh, these restrictions do present certain issues. Like, I feel like some of this lettering didn't really overlay as well as I was hoping it would. And so I played with the font color to find a better contrast over the portrait and also just because it kind of looks cool. And then for the smaller text there, I figured I could actually make it fit well by rotating it by 90 degrees, which I can't imagine is too common of a convention but I think it's actually got a pretty neat look to it that maybe even falls in line with some of the punk imagery. And also, in a way, kind of mirrors the arrangement of the goggle and the cord coming down, so maybe there's something artistic there as well. I'm trying to sell it to myself, you know? 
On the other side of the portrait, I'm blocking out some lettering that'll be used for some additional references to articles. And because space is so limited at this point, I'm gonna have to bust out one of the smallest fonts that I know how to make, which is a three by three pixel lettering. Now, obviously this isn't really something that's gonna be your top choice for readability, but I like that we're able to have a few different font sizes on this cover. And from a broad glance, it's gonna have more of that magazine feel to it when there's all these different little patches of text uh, kind of littering the page, right? So with all these finer details coming together, let's go take a look at the cover design for the inaugural, albeit faux, issue of Square Quarterly. Here we go. All right, so there's the final thing. And I had one of those moments here where you just kind of get lucky with the resolution as to what a single pixel can be used for as detailing. So in this case, I was really excited about this little trail of pixels working as the teeth of the zipper on the jacket. And uh, I just wanted to share that. As I mentioned earlier, I've uh, gone to get this one printed just to have something tangible as well. And I thought this came out really well, so I've actually added this one to my online print shop, and I'll leave a link if you'd be interested in snaking a copy of the cover design or the isolated portrait. We'll close this out with some CRT time, since I'm also curious what it'll look like through that. So thank you for watching, and take care and keep it square.